All right, what's up, sparkly people? So today we're going to just do this fairly quickly. Um, fill patterns. What size stone? What design should I put the stones in? Those would be fill patterns. And so I will start with um, six different ways. And these are just little ID tags. Um, and you can customize these however you want. They are metal. Doesn't mean anything to do with today's lesson. And the glue, use, the glue we're going to use today is CG500. Crystal Glue 500 is made in Germany. Give it a nice big squoosh. That should be all we need today. Uh, lip gloss applicator, makeup wand, whichever, but they're amazing for mixing glues. And so we'll give this a little mix. This is not a glue lesson, but it's just a nice, easy glue for me to use for this particular demonstration. So, but for today, it'll help me have to apply the glue one time, and that's all. Nice, thin glue is really all you need. Okay, so first I'll start with um, just grid. So the rows will be straight across and straight up and down, touching as close as possible. If that's the um, fill pattern that you're going for, you can spread stones out to show more of the background if that's what the client wants. It can also help you on your budget um, to space things out, get a little bit more coverage for, or a little bit more, you know, bang for your buck. So straight across, straight up and down, and that's going to be a basic grid fill. You can even call it linear, totally fine. These fill patterns are called lots of things. This is not something new. This, um, if you want to study more about um, different ways to design and fill with these rhinestones, you can easily uh, search mosaic, mosaic design, and mosaics, as we know, have been around for thousands of years. This is just a different medium, but same techniques. None of this is new. Study the masters. Study everything that is old because nothing is original anymore. And everything is from something else. So, there we go. So now you have a standard just grid. Straight across, straight up and down. Now, the next time, um, going over here, we're going to go up and down with honeycomb. And honeycomb is a lot like what it sounds, um, like in a beehive, the way the honeycomb is made, um, they kind of fit into each other. So the cells of the honeycomb fit into each other. So that's what we're going to do for honeycomb. And they're going to fit right inside each other. You can put fillers. Um, in the edges, you can trim out the edges to make it look a little nicer and then backfill with the fillers is what we sometimes do on our um, more expensive projects, but it's a pretty simple pattern. It's great. Um, all of these patterns are great for um, accenting any kind of design or just changing things up or having multiple fill patterns in one um, project. It's really up to you the designer and your client and what else let's see let's see this honeycomb is going in pretty good I didn't know if it would fit across this the other thing you can check out is um, our how to calculate class it does go over a couple of these fill patterns not all of them um, but as you can see and I'm gonna go ahead and leave this um, the spacing here so you see how these five rows fit pretty much perfectly on this little ID tag um, and this one I went down with the six stones and across is just one two three four five six rows see how it was six and six here this is gonna fit tighter so you have a different count okay and I'm not gonna put this extra edge here because it's not gonna fit properly so I'm gonna leave that off for instructional purposes and go on to the next one so another fill pattern that we use is what we call um, contour. And that can be where you have like, let's say you have a flower, a flower or a shape of some kind, right? So right now the shape is the ID tag, right? Um, you can go around the shapes, the contour of the item and 
and that will create a different fill pattern. So I definitely like to see like one technique per area of a design. Um, if you start with grid, I don't like, in my opinion, it, you can totally do this, but in my opinion, start with grid, finish with grid in your areas um, or honeycomb or whatever, but sometimes to navigate your area, to navigate your fill patterns and your lines um, can be a little tricky to, to not mix in all these and then it gets kind of junky. And uh, so pick a fill pattern and stick with it. Now you can go into your honeycomb on this, on the straightaways, but then when you get around to the edges, and let's go ahead and do that. Because then once you start to curve, it's not gonna make that beautiful, nice, tight honeycomb fill, right? It's gonna get a different, like it's just kind of weird um, on these curves. And as you get smaller and smaller, now this other side did match up quite nice, but if it was a complete circle or like an irregular uh, shape or circle, it would not have done that lovely. So let's say if we tried Let's see if we stayed in the honeycomb. See, it kind of disappears. See, it's not going to be as, as a nice of a loop there. Um, so if I was to use a smaller stone, it might be a better illustration. So maybe we'll have time to do another con a contour. But you get my gist, my, the gist. Outline the area over and over until you get to the middle. And sometimes you kind of have to um, navigate that middle a little bit better to not have a weird gap. And that's where the little filler stones can come in. And that way it kind of camouflages, if you will. So then, so we'll just leave this one kind of like that. So contour, and then it came out with a weird, um, I'd use smaller stones right there. Not my most favorite. We rarely use contour, but we totally do use it. It's just a good way. It's a good thing to practice. Um, so next we're going to do um, sprinkle. And so I've got just 20s here, but we do have lots of um, sizes in our stones. So I usually have a mixed pack of different sizes, and usually it's SS5 to SS20. Stone size 5, stone size 20. Sometimes we have mixes that have SS30 down to 3s in them, but the, for the most part, our large, largest color library is going to have um, fives to twenties. Now, when you do a sprinkle, um, we talk about this in, I believe the price of sparkle. We don't go into sprinkle on the, how to calculate class. Uh, it's a little bit more, um, intense. So in the price of sparkle, we go into, you know, formulas, fill pattern formulas. And, uh, we show you how to kind of address that to figure out how many stones you're going to need and all of that. So that's a whole different kind of thing. And then for this kind of a shape, um, you can just, I have some, you know, simple pointers here is just grab whatever's random, whatever is facing up and ready to go. You're going to have some gaps. And I chose these colors um, to show the gaps, right? You're going to have gaps no matter what, no matter if you put these little threes in here, you're still going to have gaps. And then in the price of sparkle class, we go over why, um, you know, it's okay to leave gaps unless your client is paying for every single little nook and cranny to get filled with these little threes. Um, it shows that it gets quite expensive and very laborious, even though I'm going, you know, a good speed right now um, for this super quick demo. Um, it does add up and we get hired to do thousands of items. And it's super nice to, you know, give your own items, your, you know, gifts for friends or, you know, small projects, you know, give it your all and fill it with all those little stones. And it looks, you know, so incredible when it's just in your hands. Um, but we do a lot of large things and uh, to put super tiny stones, it's it tends to be a waste um, of time and money because it's viewed from far away. So there's plenty of times where you guys might see, ooh, there's gaps. Oh my God, the Crystal Ninja is so gappy and she's supposed to be a professional. Exactly, we're, we're getting paid to do what we do and we're not gonna go outside that budget um, that the customer has set. So that's part of being a professional is sticking to the budget, um, showing your customer these different fill patterns. This is kind of a great little way to do it. And since it worked out so great, I guess we're gonna have